are saved tonight, you can shout out amen for that. Man, if you are saved tonight, well, let's wave our Bibles on. Thank God for our Savior. Amen. Woo! Amen. 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 Man, I'm telling you, great song. This is real. That's why I love old-time music. Amen. This is testimonial song, you know. Pag narinig yung awiting ito, pag hindi pa kayo napatayo, I'm telling you, I don't know if you're safe tonight. But if you're safe tonight, I'm telling you, you cannot be silent. That's the reason why I cannot be silent. That's the reason why we, we shout. I don't know about you, but brother, I'm safe tonight. Jesus is my Savior. And I'm safe forever. That's why I shout. Well, well, are you ready to rumble? Let's all stand, please. And ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Jan Higgins. Woo! Is it on? Uh, is this one? You two that one? Amen. I think I'll just preach a while. Amen. If you would take your Bibles this evening, turn to the book of 1 John. 1 John, chapter number 4. 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 1. We are trying the spirits this week. We're making sure that the spirits that we follow, the spirits we look to, uh, line up with this book and the old time Baptist spirit. Amen. 1 John chapter number 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby now, hereby know ye that know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Then every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is the, that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you would turn to the book of James, chapter number 1. James, chapter number 1. Verse number 22. James 1, 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if you be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Lord, I love you. I pray you be with us tonight. Thank you for the wonderful singing, the wonderful time of fellowship. Lord, the wonderful day that you have given us already uh, in your house. Lord, uh, the, the preaching of the word of God. Lord, I, I thank you for all of that. But as we open our Bibles one last time this evening, God, I pray that you would meet with us again. I pray you would anoint my lips with your Holy Spirit or fill my mouth with your words. And I pray, Jesus Christ, that you might be increased, that you might be high and lifted up in our midst. Lord, I pray that I might decrease. Lord, I pray that you just hide me behind your cross this evening. God, please work in our midst. We will be careful to give you all praise, all honor and all glory. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Boy, I was glad. I was
was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And as I was reading, I was thinking about spirits and about different uh, things that might cause us to get away from the old time Baptist spirit, the old time Bible spirit, the old time word of God, and old fashioned religion. And I thought about that. I thought the first, one of the first things that happens is I stop living my life through the filter of God's word. And as we look tonight and we look into this, I, I think, I, I don't know about, you guys, you guys, Filipinos probably don't do this, but Americans, when we get out of bed, some hair is sticking this way, some hair is sticking this way. Now, Brother Stephen, he'll be there here tomorrow. He doesn't have as many hairs to stick in different ways as I do, Amen. No, no. This brother knows what. Amen. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. He, brother Stephen always says in heaven, everybody will look like this brother here because there'll be no parting over there. Amen. Amen. But I wake in the morning and my, and my breath, my face, it looks like it's terrible. I'm ugly. And I need to be cleaned up. I need to be shaped up. I need to be prepared. And I go in, I wash my hair, wash my face, wash up, comb my hair, brush my teeth. Maybe brush my teeth again. Brush my teeth again. But when I leave, I don't look the same as I did when I got out of bed. And I fear many times we spiritually, we, we get up out of bed and, and we take care of the outer man. We take care of the outer appearance. But we are much like the Pharisees in Jesus' day where he said uh, on the outside of the dish it is clean, but on the inside we are white as sepulchers full of dead men's bones. Where, where we, we have washed the outside but we don't wash the inside. May I remind you that God looks upon the heart. So as we go today, as we look today, look in the word of God about some things that we could do, some things that we might be able to do to, to cleanse the inside of the vessel. I'd encourage you that, first of all, you know, you've heard, you've heard a lot of preaching today. Or a lot of preaching and many of us, we, we've heard preaching all our life for years and years. Brother Gill, it's not, it's not finding out something. It's not me learning something new. You know, you know the world and, and the modern church and all that, they're always searching for some new method, some new doctrine, some new word, some new thing. And it's not finding something new. It's just doing the thing that we already know. Now, I, I'm not opposed to methods. We're, we're, he, Brother Gill said we're on CNN right now. Amen. I'm not opposed to technology. I, I think the, the microphones are wonderful. I think the air conditioner, praise the Lord for air conditioning. When we were here a few years ago, brother, you didn't have any air conditioning. It was hot for an American. Amen. Hot for an American. But, but you know what? All of those things and, and, and the, the, the vehicles to go and get people, uh, uh, phones to text and to, to reach out to people. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to technology. I'm not preaching against technology. But let me say to you, let me encourage you, let me plead with you that new things are not necessarily wrong, but every new thing is wrong that doesn't line up with God's word. And so as we look today and we look and, and, and I've heard lots of preaching and heard the word of God and I thought, boy, that's good. But it's not necessarily something new. And I fear that many times people go out and they're looking for some new thing. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. 
Let me say that I don't need to find something new. I just need to be able to do what I already know and what I've already learned. And I need to hone my craft, hone my life, hone my spirit, hone my walk so that I might live in a pleasing way for my Lord and Savior. So as we look, I, 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 fear, I fear that many times we go in, we look at ourselves, and we say, ah, I'm okay. I'm okay. The psalmist uh, in, in Psalms 139, he said, search me, O God. See if there be any wicked way in me. And I fear many times we don't even we don't even look in the mirror, Brother Gill. We just walk by and walk out the door. You know, if we, we always, ladies, ladies, I I live in a home with three girls. My wife and three girls. I can tell you that time in front of the mirror is a precious thing. Amen, ladies. And, and, and they curl the hair. Well, hey, I like it. But they make sure the outside of the dish is clean. I see you gentlemen right here. Boy, well, make sure everything. She may look at me tonight. Woo. She may talk to me tonight. I got to make sure that the outside of the, of the pot is clean. Let me tell you, God looks on the inside of the dish. He looks on the inside of the pot. And I fear many times the outside, oh, sure, we've ironed and we've pressed and we've, we've cleaned and we've washed and we've prepared because that's what the world sees. That's what Brother Gill will see. That's what your mama will see. That's what your daddy will see. That's what your husband will see. That's what your wife will see. But many times, the outside is clean, but the inside is not clean. So I would challenge, I would plead with you that tonight, you would take a moment. We're not going to be long. We're not gonna be, I'm not going to drag it out. But I would plead with you in the balcony tonight that you would look inside of your heart and you would filter it, not by what the world said, not by, by what uh, uh, New Age Christianity says, not by, not by what these people say or what those people say, not what social media says, but what, but what the Word of God says. That you would filter and have your life filtered by the Word of God. And as you do that, I think you'll find some things that you need to cut out. But as I, we look here, be doers of the word. We've heard lots of the word of God. We know lots of the word of God. We know the principles. We know the things. But we need to not just be a hearer, but a doer. You know, my daughter, Bethany, my oldest daughter, she's 13 years old. She's a, she's a good girl. She took after her mama. Um, but if we come in, if I come in from, the, from out, out working, I walk in, I'm in the house, and in, in the middle of the house there, her shoes are laying in the middle of the house. And I say to her, I say, Bethany, pick up your shoes. And she comes to me and she says, Daddy, could I, could I get you some sweet tea? Could I get you something to drink? Could I take your shoes off, Daddy? Would you like a snack? I say, Bethany, get your shoes out of the middle of the floor. Oh, oh Daddy, uh, Daddy, let, let, me, let me bring you a, a treat. Let me bring you a, a dessert. Let me bring you something. Let me care for you. Let me take care of you. I don't want her to care for me. Listen to me. I want her to obey my command. 
And if she does not obey me, you know, the shoes in the middle of the floor are not a big deal. It's not that big a deal. But the fact that she won't obey when I ask her to do something is the problem. You may not have terrible sin in your life. You may not have terrible wretchedness in your life. But the fact that you won't clean it out when God puts his finger on it and asks you to deal with it, that, my friend, is the problem. We must look into the law of liberty, into the word of God, and we must address the issues that he lays on our heart, that he convicts us of, that he deals with us about. We don't, we don't oh, I'll do that later. You're not being a doer. You're a hearer only. Brother Gill, you know why? We talked about this today. You know, you know why families go the wrong way, why problems happen? It's because they are only hearers and not doers. They are only hearers and not doers. Look not on a woman to lust after her. Be a doer. Bring of your tithes into the storehouse. Be a doer. Don't sing country music. Oh. I told somebody I'd pick it about that. But. Be a doer. Share the word of God. Be a doer. You know, let me say to you, these tracks riding around in your pocket. Oh, yeah, uh, 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 Brother Gill, I, I got tracks with me all the time. They ain't seen the light of day in six months. I got them covered up. I wouldn't give them out. They're hid under the seat of the car. They're hid in the back of my Bible, and I'm not about to give them out. Be a doer. Be a doer. Get the word of God out. Oh, I know I'm supposed to invite people to church. I know I'm supposed to be a witness. I know I'm supposed to have a testimony. But I'm just a hearer. I'm not a doer. I know I'm supposed to control, you know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I only curse occasionally, Brother Gill. Only, only let it slip every once in a while. I only use profanity and, and uh, off-color comments on occasion. I tell you, the problem's not with your speech. The problem's with your heart. You're a hearer. You're not a doer. You say, Brother John, I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. I know all those things. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. Let me challenge you. When's the last time? Listen to me. Everybody listen to me. We're having a great time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Having a lot of fun. Let me challenge you. When is the last time you got by yourself? Now listen. You got by yourself. Before a thrice holy God and ask him, Lord, search my heart and reveal in me if there be any wicked way in my heart and in my life. If you, because see, I don't know what you need to fix. I don't know what you need to change. I don't know what you need to correct. I don't know what attitude. I don't know what spirit. I don't know what thing you need to filter. I can guess. But let me tell you, I know the guy that does. And many times, this is America. We've got our head stuck in a in cell phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, da, 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 da. Facebook. We got all the stuff going on. And we, we got the radio turned up. We got the, the, the video playing. We've got all the stuff. We're playing some game or doing something. And we don't have the time to listen to what God is convicting us about. We're on 
only hearers of the word and we are not doers of the word. You understand that there's nothing wrong with this technology until it takes the place of God. You know, I just came, I was last week, I was in India. And in India, they have, uh, they are, uh, uh, it's called polytheistic, many gods. And, and they, they have, I think they said, three million different gods that people worship in the nation of India. Snakes, goats, cows, monkeys, rocks, trees, you know, whatever. Well, they have all that, but, but they are, uh, their, their tribal way is that they are idol worshipers. All right? Now, I know we're not idol worshipers in America. Right? We, we wouldn't. You in the Philippines, I don't know, you guys probably aren't idol worshipers. Until you think about it. You know what the definition of idol worship is? Anything, any item that takes the place of God in our life. Let me say, if you like football more than you like Jesus, it's an idol. I'm preaching to myself there a little bit. If you like Facebook and you have to cut back, listen to me, if you have to cut back on your Bible reading to be able to keep up with your social media account, it's become an idol to you. Don't just be a hearer, be a doer. So, but, but that's not the final step. The final step of apostasy, the final step of idolatry, Brother Gill, is not the Facebook and not all that although that's a part of it. The final step, I take the monkey, I take the cow, I take the elephant, the snake, whatever it is, off of the altar. And I climb on the altar. And I sit on the altar as I am my own God. And I am worried about worshiping myself. And doing what I want to do more than I want to do what God wants to do. That is the final step of idolatry. And I can tell you, America is rampant with idol worship, with humanism, with self-will. And doing what you want to do, if it feels good, do it. Putting yourself on the throne and worship yourself as your own God. I can tell you, folks, you don't need to just be a hearer. You need to be a doer. Let's move on. Turn to the book of, Math, uh, of Mark. Take it to the book of Mark, chapter number 9. Amen. Boy, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Mark chapter number 9, verse 42. This is always a fun passage of Scripture. Everybody always likes it when you go to preaching on this. Ma Mark chapter number 9, verse 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believeth in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life. It's better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell. Into the into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched and if thy foot offend thee cut it off 
it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. For their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For every one that shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt hath lost its saltness, wherewith, where will you season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. I'd encourage you here, and you say, well, that's kind of a hard saying. You're telling us we need to cut something off, cut, take something out? I'll just say this to you. If you're here today and you're saved and your faith is in Jesus Christ, you say, well, this really doesn't apply to me because I know I'm going to heaven. But let me tell you something. Let me Allow me to make an application. The application is, the, if thy hand, verse 43, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Now what do you do with your hands? You do stuff with your hands, right? You do things. You work. You build things. You, you make things. You, you, uh, you cook or you build a building. You, you, you work on a computer or you, you do things. So let me encourage you, let me challenge you that if the things you are doing are keeping you from serving God, you would be better off to cut your hand off and quit doing those things and so that you could serve the Lord. Because it would be better to just have one hand and serve God that it would have both hands and be tangled in sin or tangled in the thing that you're doing, tangled in that thing that's going on in your life. You see, this is serious. We're not to be hearers only, but also to be doers of the Word of God. Secondly, if thy foot offend thee, if I took my shoe off right now, my foot would offend some people probably. But what do you do with your feet? How would your foot offend you? How would that, how would that be offensive? I say to you that the second point, the second, uh, the second premise of this is that with your feet, you go places. I had surgery last summer. I, uh, I was trying to play basketball. Some of you know that I... Uh, before or back when I was skinny, skinnier, I like to play basketball. Well, this past summer, I went. I took a group. We took a group of kids to church camp, and I tried to play basketball. Well, you know one of those moves that I used to be able to do. You know, you know, you know the thing, brother Gil. The older I get, the fat, the better I was. The older I get, the better I was. And I thought I could do this move, and I jumped, and when I did, my knee went pow. And I thought, that was not smart. So I had surgery. I had to be on crutches for seven weeks. I could not put any weight on this leg. Brother Gill saw me hobbling around, whining like a little baby. I mean, it was terrible. It was miserable. We had our conference, and I'm in a wheelchair. Literally, I'm in a wheelchair when it, when it happened. And, and my people were so great. They stepped up. They worked. They did. They served. And it was phenomenal. But it made me think there were a lot of places, because I only had one foot, there were a lot of places I couldn't go. Let me say to you tonight, listen. There are some places that you don't need to go. There are some places that you don't need to allow your feet to take you. We have a we have a saying uh, that, but where you uh, uh, where 
where your feet take you, you know, tonight, you got up, you got dressed, you came to church this evening. Your feet carried you to a good place. You did a good thing coming to the house of God to worship God with the people of God at an old-timey Baptist church. Hallelujah right there. Well, let me tell you, sometimes our feet can take us to places we don't need to be. And, and knowing from personal experience, I know that with one foot, your life would be severely hampered. It would be, it would be hard to get around. I know uh, these steps right here. I, I don't know if you saw me with the crutches, but it is very difficult for me to get up any kind of steps with one foot. I, I about fell. I, we have some concrete steps at my house, and I'm trying to get up those steps. And about the third step, about the fourth step, I'm trying to get up, and I jump. You know the way you do that—you jump to get up on there. And I hit my foot on that step. Well, that's not the half of it, because when I hit my foot on the step, guess where I'm going? And guess what's behind me? The concrete steps. Hallelujah. I'm fixing to break my fool neck. But by the grace of God, my wife was there and she put her hand and caught me. I'll never hear the end of that. But as she, as she caught me, she said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know how we guys do. I almost broke my neck. I almost killed myself. I almost was severely injured. And I'm like, no, nah, I got it. You know what I'm saying? We make it look like we got this all under control. There's no problem. There's no issue. I got this down pat. I'm doing okay. When on the inside, I'm being only a hearer and not a doer of the word of God. I'm miserable and wretched. I'm far from God. And, and you know what Satan's doing every day? He's just giving you a little more rope. Giving you a little more rope. Giving you a little more rope. And when he gets you out there far enough, get you out there all by yourself, he's going to jerk that rug out from under you. And the next thing you'll know, it'll be your head hitting the concrete. There's some places you don't need to go. You know, there are some friends you don't need to hang around with. I've got some friends that I haven't talked to in 20 years. We just don't have anything in common anymore. I go to talking about the things of God. I tell them that I came to the Philippines or I went to India. We had people say, I, I, I preached the gospel. We saw God work. I, I saw a, a mighty moving of the hand of God. And they go, why would you want to do that? It's because we are headed in different directions. So I don't call them. I don't talk to them. I, frankly, after 20 years, I don't even know how to get a hold of them anymore. I don't even know how to reach them. Now, Brother Gill, I talk to him quite a bit. We message over Facebook or whatever. Good brothers in Christ, good people that sharpen and encourage. Brother Mike Stanley, some of those guys, I, I hear from them regularly. Brother Elvis Sneather, I talk to Brother Sneather almost every day. People like that, that that are good to challenge you, to encourage you, to do right, to follow the things of God. You need to make you need to make sure that your feet carry you to those places and to those people where you'll do right and you'll do what the Word of God would have you do. So you're not just a hearer of the Word of God, but you're a doer. Let's be a doer. Let's be a doer of the Word of God. Don't just be a hearer. Then finally, if your eye, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. You know, the, uh, doctors say that the optic nerve 
is the most sensitive nerve in the human body. If you've ever been poked in the eye, you know if you get poked in the eye, everything else stops. A little old kid come up and poke you in the eye, you'll be like, oh. Why? Because it's tender. It's tender. So the thought of plucking your own eye. Let me just tell you, there are some things that you don't need to look at. There are some things that you do not need to watch. There are some things, gentlemen, listen to me, gentlemen. At least in Arkansas, it's cold right now. So most ladies wear enough clothes to cover their body. In the Philippines, I don't know how you do it. Because you've got to control, it's got to be a constant effort to control what you allow to come in your eye. You look at what somebody else has, lust after it, desire that. You look at what somebody else, some person, something, and you allow that to become a thought in your mind. Things on your cell phone, I don't know where I put mine. I may have thrown it away. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know where it's at, but anyway. Is it in my pocket? No? Okay, I'll be all right. I don't have any service on it anyway. But I'll just say this. Sometimes your cell phone, the thing, why is it? You could be watching or doing something on your cell phone that's totally clean, totally good. Gentlemen, and there'll be a, some picture of some half-naked woman pop up on that thing. Why is that? It's marketing. I know they're trying to sell stuff to you. They're trying to, to, to get you to buy these things or that thing. They're trying to get you to, they're popping up a commercial. I, I don't know. They, we have, do you guys have DISH? you have RCA? you have like uh, satellite? Satellite in the Philippines? You know, in my home, and it's just, now this is just me. Okay, this is just John Higgins, I'm not telling you. But in my home, we do not have satellite dish. We do not have cable. We do not have outside television. At all, in our home. Now we have TV, we have a TV. Well, we uh, buy, the, buy the, the movies, the, the shows, and we just play them. You know why? Because it got to be the point that I couldn't watch some decent program on the, on the internet, on the, on the, uh, the cable, on the, on the dish, without every five minutes some half-dressed woman popping up in my living room trying to sell me yogurt or something like that. Amen? Now I'm telling you, I'm not going to have any half-naked women walking through my living room. So you know what? She got the boot. We don't have it. We don't do it. We don't watch it. We don't have it in our home. Why? Because it, got it, my, it convicted me that I need to be a doer, not just a hearer. I need to make some decisions. That I would set no wicked thing before my eye so that I would do right, so that I can live for God, so I can have a clean mind, a clean heart, and I can serve Him. Amen. Let me tell you, it'd be better for you to pluck your eye out than to feed your mind with that filth and that garbage. See, we're talking about being a, a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. In America, we have a, a thing. Uh, my, my dad would always say this. He practiced this. He said there are two ways that you take in knowledge into your, into your mind. It comes through the eye gate and through the ear gate. All right? So you take in knowledge through the eye gate and the ear gate. And my dad always told me, he said, if there's a problem with the eye gate or a problem with the ear gate, if you apply some pressure to the tailgate, it'll help those other two gates to open up. Okay? If 
you got problems with what you're doing or where you're going or what you're watching, God has a way that he can adjust. Listen to me. He can adjust what's going on in your mind and in your life so that you can't do those things of sin. My dad didn't have any trouble at all. There was, a, there was a piece of leather that he kept around his waist. I don't know if they do this here in the Philippines or not. But when I disobeyed or I did not pay attention, I did not listen to him, he would remove that piece of leather from his waist. And he'd tune me up. And you know what? After he got done administering that leather to my backside, he had my full attention. Let me tell you, if you're being a hearer only of the word of God, let me tell you, God has a way that he can get your attention. And If you don't keep a short account, he will judge you and you won't like it. I'd encourage you tonight, if you're here tonight, maybe there are just some things you've heard about. Oh, maybe God has convicted you about them and you just put them off. Maybe you've delayed them. Maybe you've put them back. And, and you'd like to see God bless you. You'd like to see God work. You'd like to see God help you to raise godly children and have a godly marriage and live for Him. But God's been convicting you about some things that you need to cleanse out of your life. Let me say to you, old-fashioned Baptist preaching is preaching on sin and doing wrong and doing what God would have you to do. See, I could preach on some something that I know would get an amen. I could preach on some where we'd jump and shout. And, boy, you guys would get worked up. Boy, it'd be great. It'd be fun. But I can tell you, Satan's got a hold of you, some of you. Satan's going to destroy you. Satan will. He is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's not satisfied until he destroys you. If you're saved and on your way to heaven, he can't ever get your soul, but he can destroy everything about your life and he can get your children's soul or your grandchildren's soul. You understand, it's all about the soul. And if he can't have yours, he's going to get the next generation or the next generation. So I challenge you today. I plead with you today, beg you today. Get somewhere by yourself. And like the psalmist said, search me, O God, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Spend some time and ask God, reveal unto me what you'd have me to clean up, what you'd have me to cut out, what you'd have me to do away with so that I might live holy, righteous, and godly before you so that I can, I can be pleasing in your sight, Lord. You remember the story about the shoes in the middle of the floor? So say I walked into my house and my daughter, her shoes were in the middle of the floor. And I said, Bethany, would you get those? And she said, yes, sir, I'd be glad to. Turn around, got those, put them away. Then she came. Then after doing that, she came to me and she said, Daddy, can I get you something? Daddy, can I take your shoes off? Daddy, can I get you a glass of sweet tea? Man, you know what I'm going to feel like? I want to be like, you know, this girl is the best kid in the whole world. Just, you know, because she obeyed. But without obedience, all the service is in vain. All the, all the labor and all the work. I fear that many times we are working our head off, working, 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 but yet we're not clean. And every time we come before God, the stench of our filth comes up into his nostrils. He says, oh, man, why don't you go take a bath? Man, why don't you go brush your teeth? Man, why don't you do something about that stink? And we say, oh, no, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to live for you, God. I want to obey you. I want, I want to win 
win souls. I want to preach. I want to do what you want me to do, God. And he said, go clean up your life. Go clean that stuff out of your life. Go do what I ask you to do. Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. So I challenge you before you leave here tonight, be a doer. Be a doer. Be a doer. Not a hearer only. Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I do pray, God, that you'd help us tonight. Help me, Lord, that I would be a doer of your word, not just a hearer. Lord, I pray, Lord, if there be somebody here that there's something they're doing that is hindering their service for you, Lord, you'd help them to clean that out, to cut it out. Lord, I pray if there be somebody here tonight that there's some place they're going it's displeasing to you, Lord. It's keeping him from your word, keeping you from working through him, Lord, that you'd help him to cut that out. Lord, I pray, God, that there be somebody here tonight that is looking at something. They're allowing them, themselves to see something that is hindering your work, Lord, that they cut that out and get it out of their life so that they'd not just be a hearer of the word. Help us, Lord, when we leave here tonight that we would all be doers of your word. Help us to live before you with a clean vessel. Help us to live before you righteously and holy, pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Everyone stand, please. God is speaking to your hearts with a message tonight. Let us step out of our seats and come forward, kneel down, and let's talk to God. Father, once again, we thank you for the great message tonight. Thank you for using Brother Chan again. Thank you for your people, that your people right now, kneeling down before thy throne, O God. And thou knowest our hearts, O God. Help us not to be hearer only, but help us to be a doer of your word. Give us always, O, 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 o God, humble hearts. We could be able to obey thy words. Just always submit to thy words, O God. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the message. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. Back to your seats. Well, everybody can shout a lot amen for that. Amen. Amen. Great message. Amen. All right. Uh, we'll ask the answers to please come tonight, and uh, we will have our regular offering on Wednesday and uh, like to encourage you to